Michelle, the foundations of quantum mechanics is obviously a controversial and um, hot area for philosophers of physics, for even some physicists. Uh, there are obviously strange things from our macroscopic perspective, uh, superposition, entanglement, non-locality. These are concepts that, that are so alien to, uh, to our lives. Um, you approach these topics uh, from a different, a radically different point of view than many, uh, in, in, than many scientists and analytical philosophers of physics do. Uh, so explain to me the foundations of your thinking and how it applies to quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics indeed is a very strange subject because uh, it, it, is, uh, it has now been created about 100 years ago yeah. uh, by essentially I think the first form of uh, the modern quantum mechanics has been founded by Heisenberg in 1925, so exactly one century. And yet uh, physicists, even though they use it with an amazing success and efficiency, don't agree with each other about its meaning. This is just a, a banality. Everyone would tell you this exactly. Now, one reason for which this disagreement occurs might be that people desperately try to impose an old classical epistemological model on it and it doesn't work, just that. So that's the reason why uh, you have to go from the tactic of analytic philosophy, which is to go from common presupposition to consequences, but rather to the continental strategy, which is exactly the opposite, namely going to the elementary, the most elementary presuppositions of that. What is the most elementary presupposition of quantum physics as of every other discipline of physics, it is that physics is trying to describe the world. And then when you see the, you know, the, the mathematics of a, a theory, you say, as Galileo would have said, uh, these are the letters, the mathematical letters in which the world is written. And so by picking some mathematical uh, structures, we pick the structure of the world. If you do that, you arrive at a, a sort of amazement because the structures of quantum mechanics are such that the structures of the world must be absolutely incomprehensible. <laughs> we are completely lost in this uh, context. We, we have all the characteristics that you you quoted, namely uh, superposition, in entanglement, uh, non-locality, and so on and so on. And they all look strange. And, but when you look at them carefully, you see that in fact, in fact, what you believed was strange has no strange consequences. For instance, non-locality. Non-locality, we say quantum mechanics is non-local. But in fact, there is no way to use this non-locality to transmit signals yeah, faster than That's a fundamental uh, principle. Exactly. You cannot transmit exactly. information. Exactly. So <laughs> the, the strange features are less strange after all. <laughs> so then you think maybe the, the basic presupposition, the presupposition of presuppositions <laughs> is wrong from the start. Maybe quantum physics, after all, doesn't describe anything of the world. Maybe quantum physics is about something completely different. And what can be this different uh, approach? What can be this different meaning of quantum physics? Maybe quantum physics is not a way to describe the world, but to cope with our relations with the world. Or even better, to cope with our immersion within the world which is not really distinct from us. So in, in these few words, I have given you my conclusion. But then this has to be developed, of course. Okay, so what, what are the, what are, how would that conclusion 
uh, be, um, uh, affect the specific aspects of uh, and expl explain mm -mm. the uh, uh, these uh, not anomalies but 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 facts that seem to have been absolutely uh, uh, proven in terms of you know Bell's theorem with non locality and, yeah, and I mean there are very specific things that have to be explained. So you have a new framework. Yep. You're giving a new framework. You're saying that the old one doesn't work. I think everybody sort of agrees the old, the old one doesn't work, yep. or they certainly have disagreements on it. And now you have a radically different approach. Uh, and so how do you make progress? What is uh, a little bit stunning is that the way this uh, approach uh, addresses the, all the questions that you raised is too simple to be easily accepted. <laughs> Namely, the, the general answer to all the questions is this one. Since the quantum formalism describes nothing of the world, <laughs> therefore all these tr the strange features of the formalism, for instance, entanglement, which is a characteristic of the formalism, is no characteristic of the world. It is characteristic of what? It is characteristic of the norms that we use in order to prevent the events that we trigger with our uh, instruments and with our measurement apparatuses. So in this case, the problem is not solved, but it, it, it is dissolved from the, from the very beginning. And so it, it may uh, be felt as, you know, a trick or something too easy, too, <laughs> too simple. And yet, and yet it, it works because when you apply this uh, carefully to every problem, then you see that every okay, problem. Okay, so that's, that's the key. I mean, because you're, you're making a claim that if you, if you say that the problems of, of the foundations of quantum mechanics uh, or, or, the, or the, um, the facts of quantum mechanics that we observe, if you're saying those are not characteristics of the real world, mm -hmm. but are um, ways that uh, we use to interpret the real world in some way or by measurements, uh, you have to supply how one causes the other. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, of course, but there is no, you, you know, there is co no causality in the ordinary sense of the term because causality supposes that there is one cause and one effect that are separated, separated yeah. in nature and separated sometimes in time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, here it's not the case. It's not the case because there is an immediate, in, you know, immediate uh, interaction between the agent and what the agent is exploring. And this uh, immediate interaction is so intimate, the, the so-called uh, <coughs> inseparability or indivisibility of phenomena, which was um, uh, stated by Bohr especially, that you, you cannot um, you cannot say, oh, there are two things here, agent and world. They are completely intermingled. And this is the reason, the, the easily understood reason for which there is indeterminism, for which there, there, are, there is entanglement, for which the, there, is, there are all the features, the characteristic features of uh, quantum physics. And uh, for instance, for indeterminism, it's very easy to understand because uh, when usually we say we use probability in quantum physics either because we ignore what's going on out there or because the world is indeterminate intrinsically. intrinsically. Here you, you must say that neither is to be supposed. And we don't know if either is true, by, by the way, but there is a very easily understood fact about, uh, you know, intricacy between the explorer and what is explored. When you explore something in which you intervene, um, since you cannot predict the details of your own intervention, then what you observe is bound to be indeterminate in your eyes because you cannot predict uh, what you participate in. You are not completely in 
your own uh, field of visions, and therefore what you explore and what you modify by your exploration cannot be fully predicted. Therefore, you have to use probabilities. But probabilities are neither probabilities of ignorance nor probabilities of intrinsic nature, neither epistemic nor ontic. They are interactional.